Welcome, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of The Tom Matt Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Last week, another DIY show, doing more of those to try to help save you money. Rob Helm was back. Facelift versus replacement. In regards to, this was a bathroom remodel that he actually did, his company did, um, Quality Vision, did at our home. Little House Lansing, Sandy and I's home, to retrofit Sandy's bathroom without spending a gajillion dollars. And so that's what we talked about. That and other things that work well. Got my notes in front of me now. I'm ready to roll here. Not to sound dis discombobulated at all. Allison McClintic, facing your own music. That's what I'm trying to do right now while I get organized, being accountable. I want to welcome back to our radio program. Allison McClintock, leadership development specialist over God knows how long, master's degrees, PhDs, you name it. She's done it all over the place. That's all I have to say about that. She's a good mom, good good, good spouse, doing her thing, paying her taxes. What else can you do in this world? Allison, welcome back. <laughs> hey, thanks. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. And uh, for the radio people out there, sorry about that because you're not seeing us, but you're hearing us. And stick around because- when Allison comes in, it's 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 like I was saying pre-show. She don't play. I mean, and this is the kind of coaching that I like. I, I love dealing with people like Allison who are straight up. They just just straight up. You know what you're going to get, right? She's going to going to bring it. Before we go into the deep dive of getting in everybody's face, which needs to happen occasionally, let's talk about your fam. You've been doing uh, the basketball thing. You got the yeah. got the thing going on, Mom. What what's going on with you? Oh yeah. Well, you know, it's a nonstop thing when you have a preteen who's into sports or whatever else that a kid's into. So summer is not about summertime. It's about taxiing the child, which is cool. You know, I've always positioned my life, um, no matter how difficult it was to be there to drop them off or my daughter be there to drop off, be there to pick up. And, um, you know, so it's, it's what I love to do. And I think that's like an interesting thing for a parent, right? You have to sometimes have a real discussion with yourself. What's the most important thing in life? What does your ego want to do? And what does your heart want to do? And are they the same thing? How do you balance that line? So yeah, living the dream, I guess, you know, how do you have, that, how do you have the alignment? What is your son's name? His name is Luke. Luke? Luke. Yeah. And Luke is how old? 12, 13? He's gonna be 13 in like two weeks. Okay, so we'll call him 13 because uh, yeah, be yeah, here. he's basically a teenager, preteen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, you said that preteen. Yeah, okay, I get it. So, the mm -hmm. um, previous episode where you rejoined us after a long, long sabbatical when you're still doing all kinds of work all over the place, we did talk about rowing a little bit. And I'd like to kind of just touch on that just for a second because you are a mom of two, I believe. That's right. That's, That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So, you're a mom of two. Rowan has a really interesting story, which goes along with the family story. So enlighten everybody about how your family handled all that, what happened. And, yeah, uh, she, yeah. So in, in 2018, you know, she was like a super healthy kid always was living in a dorm at college with four other girls who were all, they were always getting strapped. They were always sick as dogs and she was always healthy as can be, but she had some weird symptoms that just didn't go away. No one really believed there was anything wrong with her took about four months, but she had cancer. She had Hodgkin's lymphoma and um, had to do six months of chemo and all of that, um, all the rigmarole that goes with that kind of thing, which is a huge challenge on every aspect of life. But what was so interesting about that is, you know, one of the, like, if we want to take a different spin on it, one of the really cool takeaways for me was that she had active cancer, but her body was so healthy. I mean, everybody else was getting strep and all the girls were immune systems were down, but she was healthy as a horse other for the, the fact that she had this thing going on. And so it's like, you know, we always hear about cancer and the, the tragedy and the scary parts, which are all valid. But then there's this aspect of if you look at how hard your body was working to keep her online, it's a miracle. It's magic. It's literally magical stuff. So we, you know, once we kind of realized that and no one even believed she had anything wrong with her, you know, so it was like, okay, let's flip the switch on this or the script on it. And let's look at this as 
look at how healthy you actually are, except for this thing that we have to take care of. And once we decided to, you know, get over our initial shock, which really shocked me the core, but get over that and look at it from this sort of magical thing where gratitude and attitude and wellness of all aspects were the focus, it was quite a life-changing, really incredible experience. Um, you definitely just don't go, you could go back from there and go back to a different kind of mindset, but we just didn't choose to do that. So, you know, I have a question in regards to this, because now when we're talking to Allison McClintock today, everybody facing your own music accountability. So, and what Allison was just referring to, if you just joined us is her daughter's we talked about this in length in the previous episode. You can go check that out on the website if you'd like. But so Luke, you just said is 12, but that was five years ago. So he would have been like six or seven years old when his sister is having this issue. And my yeah. question to you as a family dynamic, how did he handle it? How did you handle it with him? How did, how did she work th that whole thing between all of you guys? Because I'm sure there are many, many families out there that suffer through illnesses and have young ones or um, cousins or something that you're really close to? What was that like? Well, you know, he was always focused on his own, where he was in his own mind, you know, playing and, and doing all the things a little kid does. Um, and she was really able to maintain most of her life. Now, remember, because she was 14 years older, she was already in college and he was tiny. So he never really remembers her living fully in the house anyways. But when she was home, she'd be napping or hanging out or whatever. And, and she didn't really appear to be anything but maybe tired here and there. So um, I think that a lot of times if there's obvious illness and a kid can see that, then you've got something you can, can you have to contend with. But for us, he was just taking the cues from my husband and myself. And we just sort of kept going, you know? So it was like, she was working in a greenhouse the entire time too, at like 120 degrees inside that thing. And, you know, so it just didn't really pause much. Our lives didn't really pause. We were in this sort of like insular bubble, if you will, mentally, but um, we tried to keep our lives as normal as possible because that's one of the things that her oncologist team, oncology team would say is, for someone young like that, at, when she was just 21, you know, really make sure that you keep your life as normal as possible, as social as possible. But I think that that's a good idea for anybody, whether you're 20, 10 or 60, you that's, know, that's the tip I was looking for, because what I wrote down, everybody is keep going. And then right under that, I said, keep things normal. And then Allison, who is the leadership expert, who's going to talk to us about facing your own music. It's exactly what, she, what their family went through. If you can keep things normal, if you can keep things balanced, then that way we go. I got a minute before we go to a break, Alice. Why don't you set up this episode because you you know this topic really well. Go ahead. Give me uh, 45 seconds or so of where you want to go. Yeah, I think it's, there's a lot of people who lately I've been doing some work with or talking about doing emotional, psychological, spiritual development. And we, I think it's worthwhile talking about whether or not you're really ready, what it will feel like, what it will look like, what you'll be up against, how your ego is going to try to stop you from making these growth changes, how uncomfortable you could get, making sure that you're really facing the music. Are you really ready to do this or not? Because you can be tricked into thinking that it's the wrong person, the wrong time, when it's really your own ego just trying to keep you safe. Your mind can do crazy things, and that's a great segue. And thank you for kind of dr dropping that little tidbit here, because this is excellent, everybody. You want to stick around. Allison is golden. When she comes in with her advice, let me tell you, this is straight stuff. Facing your music, being accountable, all of the things that we do in life, it's all important when it comes to the emotions and the psychological aspects in our lives. You're listening to The Tom Matt Show. So easy. Okay. Yeah. I forgot that uh, people that uh, when I said nice to see you, I won't do that again. I forgot. We forgot what? 
that people are listening, not necessarily watching. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's just like, then that's the cool thing. And the other nice thing, just so you know, um, my assistant is now taking over a lot of my video. Like, I'm going to do the show like I used to, drop the video into our big Dropbox, and then I'm training her on how to do my the stuff for YouTube because she's really, I mean, she's a professional editor. And so, and, it, and because I'm going back to the university to do some, some work out there part-time. And so um, we're looking forward to seeing how she comes up with the, with her video. Yeah. And the, excerpts, the little excerpts are the things I like, because those are the, the short clips that you saw of your last one, the short clip that we can put on Instagram that you can't put the whole big show on Instagram, but you can put those little excerpts. And I just, I think the excerpts are excellent. I mean, I just think having those cut up and ready to go is really good. So yeah, mm -hmm. the video is, but radio is always, I mean, I was talking to Chris Johnson about this today. Audio is everything with this kind of work. I mean, you can have terrible video and great audio, but you can't have, you can't have it the other way. You can have, yeah. you can have great video and terrible audio. People will click right off. Okay, yeah. here we go. Let's go get you out of here and get this going i'm curious to hear your whole take on this stuff always here we go this segment of the time show is sponsored by craig 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 mayor price financial we have all of our all of our retirement zone savings with craig as i say every show full disclosure just talk just talking to chris johnson as i mentioned chris johnson earlier had lunch with him today from on target living and having a financial wizard like a Craig, Craig, Craig styles in your corner is so valuable. I want to say hello to Reggie reader as well. He was at our lunch and I may be doing an introduction to Craig styles with Reggie reader. See, this is how it works with our sponsors. Everybody. I want my friends and all of the listeners, the people that pay attention to this radio program and podcast to use our sponsors because they're first off, they're awesome. And second off, they're awesome. I mean, it's like, it's a no brainer and honest, when I told those guys when I at lunch today that Craig Styles has 11 children, has been on my show 25 times, their, their jaws hit the table. Your Mary Price Financial Advisor are, and ours, Craig Styles, can help you plan for the life you want today and well into the future. That's what he's doing for us with the right financial advisor. Life can be ism, be brilliant. Check out Craig. Please call him 1 800 528 1355. His local number is 517 483 48. Five three, Craig dot styles at ampf.com offices are located at 2651 Coolidge road, suite one Oh three East Lansing, Michigan, four, eight, eight, two, three stations that have carried us in the past and carry us currently. Of course, the Michigan talk network is the big driver that has us on all over the place, but here are some of the stations that have carried us the independence as well. WGHN 92.1 FM and Grand Haven WJM. 1240 AM is the flagship of the Michigan Talk Network in Lansing, Michigan. WJRW 1340 in Grand Rapids. WKLQ 1490 Muskegon Whitehall. WIPV FM 94.5 up north in Mackinac City. If you're not from the Midwest or Michigan, up north is like up north. It's like way up north, and that's how the Midwest people talk, and that's how we live. Mackinac City, hey, guys, thanks for listening. And, of course, our PBS affiliate at Michigan State University, WKAR. It's again, I want to thank Craig, Craig, Craig for creating Destinary Analytics, his proprietary algorithm. That is what makes the difference with him, where we are making light of weighted decisions. And lastly, I want to say thank you again to the Michigan Talk Network, the owners, and my friends, Steve and Ivy Gruber, Steve the Star, Ivy the Brains, and that we have four books on Amazon, that thing called Amazon. So please check those out. Okay, Allison McClinic is our guest today, everybody. Facing your music accountability. Allison just kind of set this up. So you go into, you're, you're going to go on an emotional, psychological road trip, and you're going to do some work. And we're going to take it from there. I'm just going to let Allison talk now because I've talked enough. I want to hear her take on this. But this is where we're going with this, everybody, facing your own music and being accountable. Allison, what, what are you seeing out there with this emotional, psychological kind of conundrum that we're in and people mm -hmm. that want to think they want to get things fixed, but maybe not. And, you know, mm -hmm. oh, well, maybe it's not my fault. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, because I see this a lot and I think a lot of practitioners in my line of work see it. 
where people will say that they want to evolve. They're not as happy as they could be. They know they've got some emotional, psychological stuff and they want to do the work. They want to live peaceful lives and they want to feel good. And then they'll engage in the work with a practitioner of some kind and then they'll quit like after two or three sessions or something like that. It happens a lot. Now I'm going to make a disclaimer and say that sometimes it's me. You know, if I'm not the right practitioner for people, that's a very valid thing. That's why there are so many different types of people that do this kind of stuff. If it doesn't resonate, it just doesn't. Maybe I'm not your flavor. That's cool. But there's a, a lot more often than not, I would say, and I'm try, I try to be very realistic. It's, it's not me. It's, it's probably you. <laughs> so, and there's a couple of things that I noticed that I think if you're ready or talking about doing this kind of thing, you might want to ask these questions of yourself and be aware of your own state of mind. And the first thing that I would say is it's really important. You realize what your, your ego is. Okay. And when I say the word ego, people think of like arrogance or something. That's not what I mean. When we're born as babies into the world, we're these clean slates. We got nothing. And it's every experience that you have from the time you're laying in that bassinet up until who you are now. It's a compare, contrast of data kind of process, which is creating preferences. That's how you get your learned experiences. It basically forms your personality. It forms your ego side of yourself, you know. And the whole ego's job is this formation of a personality and its job is to keep you safe. It's to keep the status quo going. And when you're doing this kind of work, you are challenging that ego and your ego is a trickster. It is going to do everything it can to stop you from getting into uncomfortable spots. And there's all kinds of neuroscience and stuff that shows how over time you've created these pathways and that's what this, the, you know, the amygdala of the brain understands. And it's trying to keep that, those pathways online. And, you know, it, there's some, there's some science there that shows that we're up against, you know, some serious neuro stuff here. But at the same time, if you're going to do this work, you have to realize that it's going to get uncomfortable. And that is the point. Because if you're not as happy as you could be, then what you're currently doing is not pushing you outside of any zone to develop any growth of any kind. So I think that what I come up against a lot with people who say they want to do the work is they haven't contended with this. They haven't not reconciled this ego thing, you know, that this is a real thing that's in place to keep you comfortable, safe, and um, out of harm's way. However, the brain is interpreting that. And so you might find yourself wanting to quit quicker than you even get into the weeds. And so I see that a lot with people. That's the first thing that is just sort of perplexing to me is because I think as an intelligent human, you know, you know that you're going to come up against uncomfortable stuff. Why would you not expect that? Um, but it's, it's interesting how quickly people abandon the effort. Well, there, there's several things that I wrote down here, but let me reset this thing because we're going to come up on break here in a little bit. I'll let Allison talk for a second when we get closer to break. But um, several things came up in my mind that, that well-worn path in the snow, as I've read before, uh, is it's kind of a, a, a think of it as theater of the mind thing, everybody, where you just get these patterns and these habits happening and you just you stay with what's what's easy. That's where Allison's with this, I, I'm pretty sure. And um also, I wrote down, you know, that neuro linguistics, that, that self-talk that we have constantly going on. Go ahead. Give me a 30 seconds before we go to break. Tell me what you think about that and where people can expect that the show is going to evolve to. Go right ahead, please. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your beliefs are creating your reality, right? Every experience that you have, you're comparing and contrasting to the data of uh, banked data that you have. And so you're going to see the beliefs that you have. That's how that unfolds. Your beliefs are your reality because it's unfolding in front of you and you are seeing only what you want to see and creating, therefore, a narrative. And so I think what we need to do going forward in the show is just kind of talk about making sure that you're being really aware of how you're in your own way. Perfect. Perfect. 
That is so good. Limiting beliefs, enabling beliefs are my number one on my on my top 10 list. I, I label it as faith, but I want it, and I'm always clear about it. It's not a dogmatic faith, just like that Allison was talking about. It's not ego. It's not just the, the arrogant thing. But when you have faith, you have enabling beliefs, You could this work can get easier. But you got to have the enabling beliefs. This is the Tom Man Show. Got to have enabling beliefs. That's the biggest thing. When I do my marketing campaign on the that I got coming up here, that's one thing I'm going to tell people is like, it's all right here. It's all in the head. If you can, if you can believe it, like, who was it that said it? Oh, Napoleon Hill. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. I mean, old school 1930s shit. This stuff has been around for a hundred freaking mm -hmm. years, and it's like mm -hmm. different flavor, different stuff. Um, let's go. I mean, that's just good shit. Love it. Let me get to my read. Here we go. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Tom Matt Show, facing your music accountability with leadership expert, PhD, Allison McClintic. Allison's a good friend and been with us a, quite a while, and she was just on recently, and I wanted her back because she's awesome. And it's like I told her I want her on regularly because she just brings great content. And this kind of mind work that we're talking about, everybody, with accountability and facing your own music is so impactful in your life. It's helped me so much personally. It's helped Allison so much personally. That's why we walk this walk because we want you to believe. Before we go back into the stories, though, Let's talk about white law and why you want to believe in white law and why I have them as my third segment sponsor. Jamie White is the man. And again, enabling beliefs, you got to believe if you're running into some issues with your the law and you need a good attorney, you can bank on Jamie White being your guy. His staff is outstanding. He has beautiful offices. He has a, an excellent, probably one of the nicest websites I've ever seen at white law plc.com you can just understand that white law plc is where justice meets compassion that's what this radio show is all about where we want to bring empathy and compassion and we want to help people that's the whole point right white law is your advocate our advocate in times of need i want you to reach out to him if you need something i want you to thank him for doing what he's doing sponsoring the mad dog minutes that we have on our youtube channel which are super popular you know what that's what they're here for. They're here to listen, support, and fight for what you deserve. Contact White Law today, everybody. Free, free, free consultation. Free, free, free consultation. 517-777-9785. Or if you'd prefer to go to the online version, a couple of different ways you can do it. You can go to whitelawplc.com. Or you can go to my show, our, our show, tommatshow.com, at the bottom of the homepage. Super easy. You can listen to a couple of podcasts there, find Jamie's podcast, and uh, click right on through to his banner, and away you go. Again, call 517-777-9785 for White Law, Jamie White, the whole crew over there. They are the best. Okay, Allison McClinics here talking about facing your music, being accountable, and how when we go into therapy, we can kind of fight this framework off because we're not liking what we're hearing. And 100%. Is, is that about it? I mean, we're not, we're not getting, it's like, it's like going to the doc and, and getting a, a pill and, uh, you know, take the pill one time, take the pill two, three times and nothing happens. I don't feel any different. It's not working. It's not working. Not working. <laughs> Give up. Yeah. Is, is that a good lead in? I think so. I, I think it is because there you will. So, you know, there's a couple of people I've spoken to over the years who have told me, I've gone to see this therapist. I've seen this kind of person. I've seen this person. Nothing fits. They, I just don't like what they're saying. They just don't get me. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of people who will hop from therapist to practitioner of some kind, and they just haven't found that magic bullet. Well, there is always, like I said, that possibility that you just haven't found the right person, but more likely it's you that's the issue because what any good therapist or practitioner of any kind is doing is that they're through discourse with you is starting to challenge your beliefs. And when people start having the things that they believe challenged, even though they say they realize that there's things they need to work on, that they know that there's things, 
in their experiences that are hurting them, that holding on to it is still hindering or hurting them. It's crazy how the ego wants to hold on to that stuff. It is a trickster. And what any good practitioner is doing is getting you to talk and ask you questions and bouncing things off of you and giving you insights that's now starting to put some tension on your narratives and on the things that you believe. And when people get up against that, even though they know it's something that they should let go of, it's incredible how people don't want to do that. And instead it's the, oh, it's the wrong person. It's the wrong therapist. It's the wrong practitioner. No, it's you. Hate to say it, but most of the time it's you because now that person is kind of mirroring back to you what you don't want to look at. And so it doesn't feel good. You interpret it as the wrong kind of discussion. And then you're looking for somebody else, but you don't even know what you're looking for, you know? So I think that one of the things you got to understand, right, is your psyche is like a spider web layer over layer over layer. And every single thing that you experience in your life is going to touch that web. And when it touches the web, the whole thing vibrates. It's got an impact on everything. But finding the root is, is complicated, you know? So nothing really is as it seems. You have to dig in there to find what's really causing the vibration of that web. And that has been known <laughs> to be very uncomfortable at times. And I think we said this before on the show, but people look at enlightenment or whatever word you want to use and they think it's like angels singing. But in reality, it hurts. It's tears. It's trauma, you know? And so I've been thinking about this lately because I've had a lot of clients in the past, you know, five, six years who I'll see and then a couple of times and then they're out of here. And again, it could be me, but understand that just because a practitioner puts something a certain way doesn't mean you have to adopt the way that they explain it. If it doesn't fit your exact framework, you have to find the translations sometimes, you know, you got to so face it's the just you got to face the music, translate the message into your own, you know, data points that make sense or your own frameworks that make sense. So the same stuff is like, okay, let me preface this by saying, and Alice McClintic's our guest today, everybody facing your music accountability, doing the work. I just wrote down doing the work. Now there could be situations where, and I've been in therapy, so I know this, I'm speaking from, and I've been in therapy many times, and I, that's why I'm such a huge advocate for mental health advocacy, is because I've been down this road, and I, what she's saying is absolutely spot on, because I have experienced this myself. This will help get me through there. Now, let me preface this by saying, occasionally, as Allison has said a few times throughout today's episode, is there might not be a fit. That is absolutely possible. You will know quickly and then you you may need to move on. Yes, this that is a fact, okay? Once you have gone down this and you have done this a couple of times and you, you don't find, after a couple, three times, you should be able to figure out if you really want it. Mm -hmm. And that's the operative thing. If you really want to do the work, after two or three attempts at therapy, at coaching, you should be able to have an idea of where you're at. If you don't, yeah, now we're talking it, about that. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. And you might not be ready. I mean, that's really the thing. It's like, I can tell when I'm working with somebody and we're, we're having discussions that are, you know, pretty accurately describing what's going on. I can tell through body language and the way that somebody responds that they're not ready or they are. And here's the operative word I got gathered off of what you just said is it's work. So I think people think they're going to sit down, they're just going to start talking and then you're going to feel better. Well, there is some reality too in this idea of like sitting down and talking about how bad you feel is just generating more negative, constricting, anxious frequency, right? So that's cool. And we do need to voice that stuff. But the work is when your practitioner says, I want you to go back and do this, or I want you to think about this, or I want you to draw this drawing, or I want you to reflect on that, or 
I want you to come up with these things or whatever it is. Um, be part of the solution. Be part of the solution. I used to do post-traumatic growth coaching with firefighters and they would um, go and do traditional therapy and really have some challenges with just talk therapy, which is not always a, a good fit, but it's not a bad thing either, but that's kind of the thing. They're doers, right? So they're looking for something to do. Okay. Let me, so let that's me kind of, yeah, yeah. Kind of how you want to go about it. Right. And we'll come back. We'll, we're will we definitely sure. going to finish this because we got a couple more segments yet in this episode. Let me reset this. Allison McClintock's back facing your music, accountability, doing the work, comfort zone. It, as she just said, you may not be ready. That's okay. We got more to talk about on this. To this is a huge topic because performance excellence comes from and starts with the head first. No doubt about it. This is the Tom Hatcher. Hey, I was going to ask you, I didn't want to ask you during um the, re the radio recording session, but if somebody wants a book or two, I may ask you if you have a couple off the top of your head you want to recommend to get started. Is there something that you know? Because I didn't want to throw you a question and then just have you go, um, do you have do you have one that you might want to, or do you want to look it up and see? Um, one that you think is a good primer. Maybe we have a primer and to get somebody like moving in that direction. Yeah, I've got a couple. Let me just write them down before. Got them right I, there. Yeah. Before we get started. Yeah. Um, okay. You ready? Yeah. I mean, I got to do my read first, so you got it. You got about a couple minutes to kind of get your thoughts written down there. Okay, here we go. The fourth segment of the Tom Man Show is gratefully sponsored by Brock Fletcher and the selling team of Keller Williams. Keller Williams Realty, and again, full disclosure, because we use our sponsors, we use their services, and we love them. Just like I've talked about with Chris Johnson and On Target Living, walk their walk, because I believe in their, and I've used it and I've done it. Just same thing with Brock Fletcher. They helped us sell Big House Holt. We bought Little House Lansing. I was talking to Chris Johnson about this today, too, about having Little House Lansing and having something that's much smaller, much easier to maintain so that we can have the freedom to continue to do our work. That's what Brock and his selling team at the Keller Williams Realty Company have done for us. And we trust them so much that we keep them with us with the show. Brock is a great friend. He's got probably, I don't even know, 15 or 20. I should have that number in front of me here. But at least 15 episodes in the reality of real estate on the website. You can listen to those and you can get a good input. You can watch some of the videos that are there. Here are the phone numbers that I'd like you to kind of jot down. First one is the office, 517-853-6408. 517-853-6408 or the cell phone number to the man himself, Rock, 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 517-303-3262. Go to Go online to kwsellingteam.com, kwsellingteam.com. Talk to them. Sell your home without hassles. Brock Fletcher invests money in marketing way, way before you he ever talks to you and gets your listing. That's because he wants to get you the best bang for your buck like he did for us, like he did for my neighbor when he got him an extra $20,000 and he thought he was going to sell his house for X. And I told him I thought that wasn't quite right and not really knowing, but knowing Brock, I said, you should just give Brock a call. Brock got that listing, unbeknownst to me. I did I had no idea. And guess what? Extra 20 grand sold in a week. Boom, done. That's it. So once again, Brock's cell phone number 517-303-3262. Go to TomMatShow.com, bottom of the homepage, and all of our sponsors and friends, but especially our sponsors are there. And it makes it really, really easy for you to find their services and we hope that you utilize their services because they support us and keep us on the air all right allison mcclinic is my guest today allison is a leadership development expert been doing this work for a long time she's a phd facing your music is what we're calling this one accountability before we, as we finished the previous segment we started talking about where you might not be ready that's fine mm -hmm. That's good. We just want you to get better. You got to get on the path somewhere. You got to get off the couch. Okay. If you're going to come into the gym, you got to get up and get to walk through the door. Same thing with this, with this behavior change. If you want to get self improvement stuff, if you really want to do the work, as we were talking about, you got to get, you got to get going. Perhaps, perhaps 
as I said, you might not be ready. Allison, would you have like a primer book or two that you might want to recommend to someone who's thinking about doing this before they get a hold of you to advocate for you and you advocate for them as far as helping them? Do you have some recommendations? I do because, you know, when you're talking, it's making me think, um, how do you know if you're ready? Well, you you know that when you're getting ready to do this, what's going to happen is you're going to have to face those beliefs and your narratives and things. Okay. And so your ego is saying, I don't know if this makes me feel comfortable. I'm not ready to shake up what we believe. And if you have to face the things that you believe you're going to have to be ready and willing to let go of stuff that you've held on to for a really long time. And I think that's what people are not really ready to do once they realize they're faced with that is that it's the belief system that they come up against. When that's questioned, they start to realize they believe something that they know they shouldn't. It's not really helping anymore, but they feel so uncomfortable. They don't want to let it go. So there are so many awesome books out there, but some of the best books that I've ever read were by um, Baba Ram Dass, who I don't know if you know who Ram Dass is, but he passed away a couple of years ago. He basically was a psychologist, I believe, from the 60s who was like a Harvard. I'm probably getting the schools wrong, but he was an Ivy League professor and he started getting into like when LSD and all that stuff was being looked at for psychology treatment. Well, anyway, long story short, he had all these transcendental experiences, went to India, uh, met, had some gurus, whatever, and they renamed him Baba Ram Das. His name was like Richard Alpert or something really boring like that. But anyway, he turned out to be this incredible um, author and lecturer on belief systems and getting yourself ready to face that music. And so he wrote a book called Polishing the Mirror, which I love. Another one he wrote called Grist for the Mill, which is great. Um, and then Dr. David Hawkins wrote Power Versus Force, which is a really interesting book about emotions and the power that emotions have frequency-wise and how those frequencies start to interact with your actual brain and your chemical production, your hormone production, serotonin, all that stuff that we need to feel good is starting really with your emotional frequency. So power versus force is great. There's another really out there book called In the World, But Not of It. And this book is supposedly by um, Gina Lake, her name is, and she supposedly is channeling, okay, are you ready for this? Supposedly channeling Jesus. But it's a really interesting book about beliefs and how that is impacting your peace. So I think that if somebody wants to say, am I ready to do this? And I think people say they want to do stuff, but they don't really know what they're about to embark on, which is basically this hard, hard questioning about who you are, what you are why you believe it, what's happened to you, what your narratives are, how you built your structure of reality around your experiences and how your commitment to those beliefs are either helping you, hurting you or hindering you. And what it does is it brings a person back to their heart in it. So if you're suffering, you are taking part in it. You are a willing participant of your own mental, spiritual, and emotional wellness. Let me ask you something real quick. to just give you a second to think about this one. I have read as well, and all of the things, Alice McClintock's our guest today, everybody, facing your music accountability, that body aches, back pain, pain, chronic pain, can be coming from unresolved mental health issues. And uh -huh. so what Alice yeah. is saying is you could apply this. You might have chronic back pain. And I know I've read about this and I know this. And what do you think about this? We got a couple of minutes before we go to break. I'd like to talk to you about that, about body aches and how all of that, that, that can be woven into this picture as well. And people think I got a slip disc or I got a diagnosis of that. It's, it's, it is not that at all. It's, it's, it's something yeah. else. Yeah. There's a, I mean, 
and that's not even just something that you could say people believe it. There are consciousness research. I mean, there's studies, there's placebo, nocebo, consciousness research papers that are looking at how in actuality uh, pain, unless it's an acute issue, like you broke, you know, you have a compound fracture or you landed hard on your tailbone or whatever. I mean, something that's like easily acute, tangible cause of pain. But if you have other pain or lingering pain after the physical piece should have been uh, solved, there's all this research that shows that pain is actually um, happening in the body last. So the first thing that's happening is you're generating a particular frequency in your subtle body field, which is an energy field coming off the body that's generated through emotions. And those emotions are resonating at a particular frequency, which is then up and down regulating chemicals in the brain. And so when people have a lot of trauma, emotional or psychological trauma in their lives, and it's unresolved, it started first in this energy field of constant generation of this constricting energy. And then it will manifest in a physical symptom because your body has all these different centers in which energy is coming and going. It's feeding organs energy systems, nerve. I mean, the whole, it's all one related organism. So, you know, a lot of times people are trying to like deal with the symptom instead of what the actual cause is. So it's not a leap to make that if you have emotional, spiritual, or psychological trauma or pain, that you're actually seeing it in the body and that what you're trying to do to fix it isn't working because that's not the actual cause. If you're if you're suffering with some chronic pain issues, and we're gonna we'll come back to the in the next segment and and finish the thread and and all of the other threads, this is awesome. This is why I have Allison in because this is a huge topic, and there are many many layers to what happens to us. I love the analogy of the spider web on top of spider web on top of spider web. When you want to face your music, the title of today's episode, and you need to be accountable, you need to figure out how to navigate and understand why it's all interrelated and how it's woven together. Stick around. We'll be right back with our final segment. Allison McClintock's here. This is the Tom Matcher. Yeah, I've read, I've read a bunch of stuff about chronic back pain and it's oh, yeah. all, it's all mental health stuff. All right. This oh, is it, plug, yeah. plug, plug, plug spot here, girly. So let's, uh, okay. I'll do mine and you got yours hit. You got yours ready. All your, oh. all your data, all your uh, numbers. Sure. You got them ready, so I can, so I don't want to catch you off guard. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then get your thoughts together on your, uh, on your wrap, your takeaway. We'll have that in about eight minutes or so. So okay. kind of, I know you're not, gonna, you, you don't have a problem with any of this stuff, but uh, the highlights, the highlight reel. Ready? Okay, here we go. Love doing radio. Love doing the podcast. Love doing all of it. So much fun. It's so awesome. And I appreciate everyone so much. If you want to become a fan of the show, just subscribe to our YouTube channels. You won't miss an episode. You can get us on Spotify. You can get us on iTunes. You can get us on all the biggers, the big ones. Seems like Spotify is the one where people like to listen to the podcast. But YouTube is if you want to watch the whole video and or our excerpts of the video just to get an idea what this episode is about then go to youtube tom Matt show and you can find it but all of that's located at our website tom Matt show com, and it's super super easy to navigate there you can have click through buttons to the providers all of the uh, podcast providers or the youtube channel or the tiktok or our instagram or all it's all there it's all it's one stop shopping with that now to my guest allison mcclinic facing your music allison how would you like people to connect with you for coaching, for private sessions, for group speaking? Cause I, you know, that's back. That's how I met Allison 15 years ago, everybody. She was doing a speaking engagement at Michigan state university. And that's a fact. And it was a nice event. And it was like, wow, this, this woman's got her stuff together and she's way better now than she was then. So you know what? You just keep getting better. Right, girl. But how do you hey, want people thanks. to thanks. Yeah, exactly. No, you're it's, it's a fact. How would you like people to get a hold of you? Well, probably the best way would be just to go to my website, which is allisonmcclintick.com, M-C-C-L-I-N-T-I-C-K, 
Well, you can find me on LinkedIn. I get a lot of inquiry through LinkedIn. And I think a lot of your listeners, you know, maybe still have some of those accounts and things like that, or business folks. Uh, Instagram too, you can find me on that way, or you can uh, text me, 248-897-1038. There you go. You know what? Easy breezy. That's what, a, that's what honest, really tr trusting guests will do. They'll just give you their phone number. Text her. That's it. Send her. At least that can worst that can happen is I don't text you back. <laughs> well, exactly. And it, you don't right? if you're having an issue or you just say, heard you on Tom's show, or if you want to get a hold of me, uh, what are those books again? Um, I'm gonna look for that polishing the mirror. That was the very first one. That's how I when I when I when I listen to this kind of stuff, Allison, go with the first because that was like right top of mind for you. But the polishing the mirror, I'm, I'm gonna be looking that up as soon as I get all this production work done for this episode because I try. That's the thing, everybody. When you get an expert like an Allison McClintock, who's done all her, she's done the heavy lifting. She's got the educational background. She's got the reps. She's done this work. She's coached hundreds, if not thousands, of people on all of these topics. If she gives you, a, if she gives you a referral on a book, listen up. Some of my read best, it. Read it because some of my best friends have given me referrals on books, and they're always really, really good. So that's a good one. All right. We were just talking about body aches and the mental health aspect of body aches, and we've covered a lot of ground here. One thing that I have that jumps out to me that I have right in the middle of my notes here, Allison, is the beliefs and all of that. Now, you gave the book recommendations. You have all of this. Um, I also wrote down, and we haven't discussed this, but the term avoidance, mm -hmm. where people avoid the hard work. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's, it doesn't matter if it's eating, if it's working out. If it's mental health, if you want to feel better, the first thing you got to do, you got to get your faith. You got to get the mental health going. You got to get this stuff figured out, but you can't avoid. Talk about avoidance a little bit because that fits into, are you ready? Because mm -hmm. if you avoid it, then obviously either if you're telling yourself, I want to do this and then you avoid it, then you obviously are not ready. Yeah. I, I tend to think that avoidance I mean, sometimes it's laziness, but in this kind of work, I think avoidance is really about fear. I mean, I really think it's like a, a, um, a surface level reaction to a deeply seated fear of something. Um, you know, there's a book, a leadership book called um, Leadership on the Line, and it's basically a concept about change. You know, the people don't fear change, they fear loss. And when they put up some kind of resistance or avoidance to some kind of initiative, it's because that they're afraid that something that they value is going to be taken from them, lost, fractured, something like that. So it's not the change or the initiative that they're really freaking out about so much as something that they value that they want to preserve. And sometimes those values are not things we should be trying to preserve. But I think with avoidance, we're afraid of something like there's a good exercise. It's a simple one. Take out a piece of paper, put down on one side what it is that you're wanting to do. And then on the other side, just have it say, you know, um, if I do X, Y, Z, I'm afraid that this will happen, dot, 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 next line, next line. It's a simple, very simple exercise, but it gets it, you know, it gets your brain engaged. You've got to figure out why you're avoiding something. I mean, there's a reason. And if you're not conscious about why you're avoiding it, then how do you expect to really ever get started? You have to know why you don't want to do it and what's stopping you from doing something. Because really what that is, is it's fear of something being lost or something happening, some value that you've, you've put some weight on, whether it's a good value or not, perhaps you think is going to be fractured. You know, so I think that's part of the issue, right? When we're talking about beliefs, and this kind of enlightenment work is all about your beliefs. You 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 have to fracture the narrative and your belief structure. You've got to smash that thing with a hammer and put back into structure what you want to keep. And there's, you know, our experience is creating a structure of reality that has all kinds of junk in it. Good stuff, great stuff, bad stuff, painful stuff, stuff you avoid. So, you know, 
that's the thing you have to understand. If you don't know why you're avoiding it in the first place, afraid of what you might see behind that door, then you're never going to get started. And know that when you are ready to say, okay, I am ready to do this, you are going to be opening the door to some scary <laughs> monsters on the other side, probably. But the result but, can be so amazing that yeah, when you well, yeah. the monster, you can slay the dragon. Yeah, because it's all stuff that you've chosen to hold on to. Right. It's it's not like, um, you know, even if something something has happened to you that's so horrible, that someone did something so horrible to you, we don't want to minimize the fact that A, you should have never had to experience that and B, it was painful and cruel or whatever. Yeah, that's a given. But how you choose to look at it and how you allow it to affect you is entirely up to you. But that's the other thing that people avoid. They don't want to be responsible for, for saying, I am contributing to the pain of this memory because I'm choosing to consider it painful. Let, and let so me, let me throw this equation at you to see what you think. And I, you may have heard me say this before choice plus challenge equals change My C plus C plus C little equation. The way it works, everybody is the operative word is what Alice has been talking about. The choice, the choice it's, but it's the challenge. That's the really, it's the, that's, that's what's going to make the difference because if the challenge is very small, then the change is going to be very insignificant. If the challenge is higher, larger then the change is going to be larger. You see how that works? Do you like that? I love it. I, I love it because it's it's totally spot on. You know, it's totally spot on. So if if you're avoiding something because you're really afraid of that giant monster in there and you don't take that on and there's no challenge there in taking that on, you it, it won't change, you know, or or you'll be able to crack the door just a tiny bit. That doesn't mean you're going to throw the door open on day one. You know, you may just crack it and it may take a year to open the door all the way. Yep. Incremental change takes time. Incremental. Yeah. Incremental yeah. Change takes time. I want to um, I want to give you a, a, at least a couple of minutes for your takeaway here because it's been an excellent episode and we've had a lot of topics here and you're so knowledgeable with all this. What would you like to be to leave the listeners with from your uh, latest visit on all of this? Allison McClintock's our guest today, everybody facing your music accountability. What would you like to leave as your takeaway from today's episode? I think it's just mainly those pieces that, you know, it, it, to encourage you that if you want, if you feel called to evolve emotionally and psychologically, the, the universe or God or whatever your framework is, is putting you there for a reason. If you feel like you know there's something for you to work on or something for you to do, or you feel called or pulled in that direction, then please take that as a sign that that's what's supposed to be happening. You will either heed that call or you won't, and you'll continue to suffer. But when you decide to take, take it on, you have to realize that that belief structure, that reality you've created, your paradigms, your narratives, that is what you are uh, addressing. And that is what you're going to have to smash into pieces. And then you get that, but you get to put it back together the way that you want to. And it takes a little bit of time, but remember your ego is designed to try to keep you safe. It doesn't want you asking these questions, not because it has a life of its own, because it's trying to keep you functioning. It's like Maslow's hierarchy. Your ego is just trying to keep you alive and functioning. So you do kind of have to pull yourself off of your ego a little bit like a witness, that voice that's talking to you inside there. So I would just say, if you're having some trouble or you think it's going to be challenging, it will. And keep finding someone to work with so that you can get comfortable enough to see it through. Just remember, when you do find the comfort to see it through, you will, you will feel better. And take it from the two of us. We've both experienced all of this. That's why we like to talk about these topics. It's amazing how you can feel differently. It's amazing the types of things that you can accomplish. Again, I want to thank Allison McClintic for being with us. If our show fits your business or group's mission, we want to be of service to you. Always remember 
before you can share love with others. You must love yourself first. That's what I close the show with every time. Thanks again to Allison McClintock, Sandy Matt, Craig Styles, Brock Fletcher, Jamie White, White Law. We'll talk to everybody next week and have a great week, everybody. Go out and ignite your life. Remember, Tom Matt Show is a production of Boomers Rock Media. Lastly, as I always say at the end of our episodes, I want to thank profusely our producer, Mitch Anderson. We're out. I got to give him that love every time. Every time. Hey, better and better, baby. Better and better. I am going to start a YouTube channel, I think. Good. I think I'm going to just start doing speaking to people through that. Do you have any advice for me on that? Because I don't know, like, can I just set it up or do I have to have a screen? Like, yeah, what, you what do you have, think? You need to have, um, you've seen my YouTube channels. What I did is I hired, I went on um, Fiverr and I found some designers. I would, I would, I would hook you up with my, with my um, assistant, Vanessa, because I spent, I spent too much money on the design of like that banner that's behind me and how those YouTube banners, those channels are set up for the first initial banner. And then all of the initial setup, it's kind of complicated, but if you can find someone like a Vanessa who she's so, I mean, the quality of work that she does and the cost involved is so doable I mean, we're paying her five bucks an hour. She's in the Philippines. She speaks great English. So if you record it and she sets it all up for you, or you get yeah. a home, say, hire her for a month, cost you a hundred bucks, give her an hour a day to kind of get going on this thing and say, this is my concept. Here are some graphics. Here are some colors. I want you to set up my YouTube channel for me. I'll introduce you to her. Give it a shot. And then see if she, once you do these recordings like this, or... You could take some clips from me because she has access to all those and take your clips and um, splice them into your YouTube channel. Feel free. I mean, we can do that for sure, but that's what I would do. Yeah. There, okay. YouTube for me was super complicated. I spent a long time, a couple of months watching YouTube videos on how to set up a YouTube channel just because I had no idea. I was completely clueless. And then the thumbnail design, and all of the stuff that before you put this stuff up, you, you and I, we, we could talk about all of those things. So I can do it on zoom too. Like this, yeah, I have a zoom account. Yeah. You can, you can record it, record yourself on zoom and make it however long you want to make it, send it over to her, give her a chance to kind of edit it up for you, but you got to get the channel set up first. So oh, gotcha. that's the first thing is get the channel set up, get the banner behind it. Um, if you wanted to do a banner behind you, like we have with mine. Yeah. I could probably do that through Canva. Oh I mean, yeah. Pretty good. I'm Ooh. very good at Canva. Okay. Yep. Then you and can stuff. Do I just, I, I just don't know like what people listen to anymore. I know people are on TikTok. Like I hate TikTok. You know, I don't, I, I don't. like TikTok. The reason I like it See? is because I have come across, I, I was not going to even touch it with a 10 foot pole. And it's just it was so like, complicated. It's actually, what I found, Allison, is because I started doing my video social media with YouTube, which is the hardest, that when I went to TikTok, it was like, well, this is fucking easy. Oh, um, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because YouTube's very layered, very specific about, you know, how you monetize things and how many listeners you got or how many viewers you got, how many hours you got to have. So it takes a long time to get that number up where you get some traction. But got to start somewhere and it's like okay yeah i just want to help people i mean i don't ex expect to make any money off of it but no but it's, it's getting your word out there it's you know what you and i both know the intrinsic value that we get out of doing this stuff is so rewarding yeah that it's it's you can't put a dollar sign on it. it took me a long time to understand that you were one of the ones who helped me understand part of it and it's just like you know i went through all of that we need to sell this. We need to make money at this. We need to do this. We need to do that. No, what you need to do is you need reps and you need to keep practicing what you're doing and then just put it out there and see what happens. So yeah. I want to do some live streaming too. I've got some stuff set up here where I want to do some things. Maybe we'll do something like that, but I would talk to, um, I would, I would, if you, if you got a hundred bucks that you want to just invest with somebody that can help you, who's really good at video, really good at the graphic stuff, 
she's great. And I know she has space in her. And I only refer people that I know that are good. You have to pay her a month up, up front, but she's been with us now seven, eight months. And now she, I give her, um, I think we're paying her three hours a day now because she's got quite a bit of things that she's doing. She's doing a lot of work for us, but she's so damn fast. That's why I'm like, I can go back to Michigan state and do some consulting out there make a little bit of money and she can handle it and do a, a way better job than I can. So it's yeah. like no, it's a no fucking brainer. I mean, yeah. It's like, yeah. so if you want me to, I can, I can introduce you to her and um, yeah, that'd be cool. I, I would definitely be open to thinking about it. I, I, I don't know your Canva stuff, get, get your templates, get your colors, get your branding ready to go with your, like from your website, then send that to her and let her have that, have at it and just, give her the concept, record a couple of recording, record a couple of yourself with zoom and give her that content and say, okay, first build the channels, the channel. And then here's a couple of videos I want to see and see how it works and, and do a probationary thing and just say, I like it. I don't like it. I want to give you a month to try it and uh, see what you get because it saves you a lot of, lot well, of like do how do people like if you're doing this on zoom and they want to listen to it as a podcast, how are they doing that? Well, you take the file that we have here because you're going to, I'm going to get a recording from zoom. And as I recorded this and now I go into, well, or she is now I have my big Dropbox. I take that video and I, I first I have the big chunk. And then I have the small excerpt chunk. I just take, I take clips out of, I edit it myself. That's what I've been doing. I taught myself how to edit. And so, but that's where I want her to start doing this. And I'm going to be looking at a video here pretty quick on her first excerpt. Really curious to see how it came out for her because she hasn't done one of these yet for me. And I know she's going to be great. I'm just, I gave her my thumbnails because I changed the, the way we're doing the thumbnails and we're getting kind of, kind of crusty. And I didn't think we we're getting enough bang for our buck. And as soon as I had her change the thumbnails to more of a, like, it's just your picture with the title and just my graphic on top. Tom Matt show doesn't have my picture on it at all. The, all of a sudden we started getting more views on YouTube. Uh, um, it's just the, the thumbnail is, is a key window. It's like your book cover. If it's, mm. if it ain't right, you ain't getting nobody looking at it. It ain't happening. So, and she can help with keywords. I'm just, I'm going to be watching. So that's a lot to kind of digest, but. Um, yeah. So you I were think, saying though, that when you take to get someone to listen to the zoom on a podcast, do you take the file and you like upload it to a podcast thing? Well, for the podcast now, I'll, I'll send the audio tracks here in a second. I'm going to do, I got a little bit more pre-production to do. Then I send it to Mitch, my producer. Oh, gotcha. And, 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 and we use Spreaker. Now Spreaker I don't know how much I think I think you get really nominal cost on that. And that's just the audio version. So Spreaker okay. then is an aggregate Spreaker's an aggregator, which then populates all of the podcast services. So there's a handoff there. So oh, I gotcha. So that's where we we spent some money with with Mitch, but he's he sends our shit all over the place because oh, he nice. not only does he polish up the audio, but then it and then now the Spreaker automatically populates YouTube with our little thumbnail that, that we create. And so, and I sent him a recap. So it's kind of it's like a whole thing. It is. It's a, there's a lot of production that goes into just a little bit of thing. That's why having a producer, somebody you could think of Vanessa for yourself is like a producer who is helping you behind the scenes and ask her how she would want to do it. And how do you get to the podcast? Um, services like the iTunes because it's not that hard. You can yeah. go directly to iTunes. You could go directly to Spotify, but you want to have a service like a Libsyn, L Y B S I N, or or Spreaker because we were on Libsyn before we were on Spreaker. I think Spreaker. Well, that's what Mitch chose, and I think it's better. So just leave it well, there. Thanks for that info. I I just. It's like, I don't want to bother if no one has, is going to be able to find it or, you know, it's just, it seems you're just little... talented, get your word out there. I'm going to encourage you to really at least try it for a month, see what happens with her assistance and see what, ha but it takes time over, you know, it, it, it's going to take some reps and some, it's not going to happen overnight. Just like what we just talked about. You, right. 
you got to you got to put in the effort and the time and let this shit grow and just be consistent with your 20 minute podcast or whatever and just see what your cost is with it yeah you go, you go with her first with vanessa for vanessa's a hell of a lot cheaper than mitch mitch is here in muskegon but mitch is very very good i mean he is excellent and so i'm very happy with his uh, production value and his cost it's but we have sponsors that help us pay that cost. Yeah. Pay it. We, right. Yeah. And, gotcha. Yeah. So anyways, no, it's good. I just, I like love to read research. I love it. And what's so interesting is that I like, I've become sort of a basuelic acid expert and it is incredible what this stuff will do. Cause I have a certification in um, clinical aromatherapy too. So like, I'm very interested in all these topics, placebo research and stuff. Like people don't know this stuff. They don't know it. And it's like, talk about beliefs. We're living in a matrix. I mean, the stuff that's presented to us is for, is, is like mechanic fed and people need to like, see what's actually out there because well, it, it'll only, blow your mind. Right. And with AI, it's only going to get, I don't want to say it's worse. It's just going to be more of it. So that's where having original content, like our stuff, I think I believe in my beliefs. I believe that there's no way that it's going to make us better because yeah. our support people can use the AI tools to make our product better. You can't take our stuff because AI is not creative. AI does AI as a tool. It's like a yeah, it's got to be informed. So yeah. far, it doesn't have a brain of its own. <laughs> you got to got to feed it, and you got to you got to. It's just a tool. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I'm freaked yeah. out by it all the imaging and all this stuff, but Hey, I got to run. I got to get this yeah, stuff. Do your thing. So thank you for your time today and I will be in touch. So good job. Yes, Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll see ya. All righty. All righty. Bye-bye. Alice McClintic is badass. F facing your music, framing things up in a different aspect. One of the th takeaways from today's episode, I'd like to say is you got to be ready. You got to be ready with all this stuff, you guys. It's like, if you're not ready, if you don't have the beliefs intact, if you have a limiting belief that's going to hold you back, don't waste your freaking money. Get the books that she that, that books books are the easiest, cheapest way to get gain knowledge. Podcasts are all over the place, but those are opinions. Okay, books are opinions as well. But when you get an opinion and a referral from an Allison McClintic like the Polishing the Mirror book, which I'm going to look into. Now you got something to go by. And of course, I got, I, I have a huge library of books that I've read. So hit me up anytime you go. Been a good one. Thank you so much for watching, listening, being a fan of the show. And we will talk to you next time. I'm Papa Tom. This is the Tom Mad Show. And I appreciate you all very much. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Love you. Peace out. We're out. Baby.